The world as we know it is in crisis. The temperatures are rising up to 120 Fahrenheit or 50 Celsius in most parts of the earth. Many animals are already extinct. The majority of glaciers and ice shelves have disappeared. Extreme weather patterns are becoming more frequent and intense. Famine, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, drought, and hurricanes are ravaging all continents. Good morning. Welcome to News Flash Morning News at 8 this Saturday, August 1st. We bring you breaking news this morning from Geneva, Switzerland. Very good news for a change. Actually, exciting news. All countries of the world have been meeting in Geneva this week and have signed a historical agreement to address the catastrophic global climate change crisis that is currently threatening our planet and the survival of human and animal life as we know it. This treaty represents the success culmination of years of acrimonious negotiations and failed accords by finally bringing a concrete and immediate solution to the climate change crisis. Let us now go directly to Geneva outside of the conference building where the treaty was signed and speak to our local reporter on site. Good morning, Francois. Good morning. Bonjour. Good morning, Sally. Francois, please tell us about this historical event of fundamental consequence for all of us. Describe what you saw inside the conference room when the unanimous vote was taken and everyone present realized the earth-shaking significance of what had just been agreed to. Yes, Sally, an extraordinary experience. Incroyable, jubilant, pandemonium. Never as the normally stayed and self-controlled diplomatic world witnessed such an exuberant explosion of joy. While the journalists went out in all directions to report on this monumental breaking news. News flash. Finally hope for our planet and for humanity. Remarkable. But was this an easy negotiation, Francois? How was a consensus reached after years of failures and disappointments? Not at all an easy negotiation, Sally, bien sûr. The government delegates deliberated endlessly for five days, from Monday until Friday, without advancing much on any issue of consequences. On Friday, the frustrated chairman of the diplomatic conference finally took things in hand. He announced that the building would be locked and no one would be allowed to leave until a treaty was signed. Remarkable. The chairman then explained that the only realistic solution on the consideration, the solution that could be implemented with immediate effects and at the same time in all countries around the world, was a recent invention just patented and approved as safe and effective by the major health authorities around the world, the Lilliputian pill. Remarkable, the Lilliputian pill. We have never heard of this invention. What happened then? At first, the diplomats broke into an animated debate with the usual acrimony and divergences. The atmosphere grew almost as heated as the record heat wave going on outside the building. As the hours passed and the afternoon turned into night, suddenly, the ventilation system and the air conditioning in the locked building broke down. The conference room slowly turned into a baking oven. The delegates became desperate, perspiring, searching for water. Some experienced panic attacks. Others became sleepy and confused. As Friday turned into Saturday, the European delegates realized that it was the start of August vacation, sacred to your Europeans, and began to grumble and complain vociferously. They had planned to be in their cars already, with their families heading to the coast of the mountains. The situation became unbearable, close to riots. Remarkable. And then? And then suddenly, all delegates became razor sharp, focused on a single goal. How to get out of the hell hole? It was not even clear how many had read, much less understood, all the terms and conditions of the treaty and the nature of the miracle pill. Shortly after 7 o'clock in the morning today, they realized that failure to act was no longer an option. They all pushed ahead of each other and struggled to reach the podium to sign the historical treaty as quickly as possible. 
and when the conference doors opened, everyone rushed out in jubilation. Remarkable. Thank you for that vivid report, Francois. Truly, truly breaking news. Oh, I almost forgot before we finish what was actually agreed to under the treaty. Welcome to Newsflash Morning News at 8 this Sunday, August 2nd. As we reported yesterday, and as the entire world knows by now, all countries of the world signed a historical treaty a day ago in Geneva, Switzerland, to address the catastrophic global climate change crisis that is currently threatening our planet and the survival of human and animal life as we know it. After years of failed attempts and heated disagreements and acrimony about how to address the climate change change crisis, all countries finally reached a consensus that failure to act was no longer an option. They signed a treaty whereby they agreed that on the date of its entry into force, which will be two weeks after its signing yesterday, each country will take 72 hours to distribute the so-called Lilliputian pill to all of its residents, who will then be instructed by law to take the pill at the same exact hour. The decisive hour for everyone to take the pill will be 12 noon London time, which means 1 p.m. in Europe, 7 a.m. on the east coast of the USA, 7 p.m. in Beijing, and so on, depending on the time zone. My guest today is the overnight celebrity and now world-renowned inventor of the so-called Lilliputian pill, the distinguished, eminent Dr. Gurong himself, whose miracle pill promises to solve the global climate change crisis. Dr. Giron has accorded us the honor of an exclusive interview to talk to us about his invention and joins us from his research laboratory on his remote farm in northwest Iceland near Bolingarvik on the Westerfords Peninsula. Good morning, Dr. G. Good morning. Thank you so much for according us this interview to explain your formidable invention and how it will solve the global climate change crisis. Thank you, Sally. Happy to be here. Dr. Gurong, could you please explain to us in non-scientific language the nature of your invention and how you came to invent such a miraculous pill? Well, yes, of course. As you know, I was born and raised in Iceland the land of the Icelandic pony. Wonderful creatures, tiny versions of the European horse. Actually, Icelandic ponies are not at all ponies. They are small, precious horses. Imagine, I like to call them ponies. It's more endearing. How interesting, yeah. I actually started raising Icelandic ponies as a child on my parents' farm in Northwest Iceland on the Western Falls Peninsula such noble, loyal little animals. I owned almost a hundred of those lovely, minuscule equine creatures by the time I graduated from university. After my various studies in medicine, public health, biochemistry, genetics. Yes, <laughs> remarkable, Dr. Giron. But could you please tell us about your invention, the Lilliputian yes. pill? Yes, of course. It's just that I feel so passionate about the Icelandic ponies. And in great part, I owe them my miracle invention, which I am putting in the public domain for the common good of humanity. My patent attorney advised me to call my invention the Lilliputian pill, but I would have preferred the Icelandic pony pill. You know, in honour of those lovely, loyal, kind, tiny little creatures that I would have been more appropriate and fairer, don't you agree? These noble Icelandic ponies never receive the recognition they deserve. Yeah, I agree. Very honorable of you, Dr. Giron. Indeed remarkable, but, but please tell us about your invention. Oh yes, of course. My invention. I apologize. Anyway, as my family of Icelandic ponies continued to exponentially multiply, I slowly realized that I would never have enough space and resources to afford having so many ponies if they were the size of normal horses. 
Now this got me thinking. If we humans could become smaller in size, then we would also take up less space and would need to use much less of the world's resources. And so, I decided to commit my career and my scientific knowledge and experience into inventing a pill which, in a single dose, could turn an adult into a half a meter individual, but who would otherwise remain identical with all the same features and qualities as before. Children would turn correspondingly smaller. I finally succeeded in inventing such a pill, the Lilliputian pill, or by its more endearing name, the Icelandic Pony Pill. Remarkable indeed. Please explain to us more clearly how your invention solves the global climate change crisis. Well, it is obvious. No. If all humans become half a meter high, it is hoped that they will consume significantly less energy, less food and water, smaller cars, clothing and utensils, reduced means of public transportation because more humans could fit into buses, trains and airplanes, and eventually smaller houses and buildings, all of which would allow the world to recover, heal and thrive again. Mm, remarkable. Look, sorry for interrupting, but please, Sally, I would like to return to the topic of the Icelandic ponies. Such gentle, kind, intelligent, modest little creatures. I would like your audience to understand that. Yes, yes. Thank you, Dr. Giron. So sorry. I wish we could continue, but my producer tells me we must go to a commercial break. My apologies. Your producer? But where is your producer? In my earpiece. Remarkable. Good morning. Welcome to News Flash Morning News at 8 this Thursday, August 14th. Today, we have a very important public announcement to make on behalf of the government. Today is the decisive historical date. The treaty to solve the climate change crisis comes into force effective today, 12 o'clock noon, London time. The governments of all countries around the world have 72 hours to distribute the Lilliputian pill to all citizens and residents, one per person. Exactly 72 hours from today, everyone in each country must take the pill under force of law, subject to heavy fines and imprisonment. In urban centers, the distribution of the Lilliputian pill is relatively straightforward, as residents have been clearly instructed where to pick up the free pill, some at hospitals, others at pharmacies, even at supermarkets. The challenge for governments is to ensure the distribution of the pill to communities in remote areas. Fortunately, many volunteers have presented themselves to help with this task. This is truly a historical, remarkable moment for all of humanity. Dr. Giron, has someone called Dr. Giron? News reports are coming in from around the world. No one has taken the pill. We need to call Dr. Giron urgently. I hope he hasn't taken the pill. 